And we have developed those algorithms that allows us to create those digital human. And we see the ecosystem full with it. Um, I believe that now we will see more and more companies integrating this great tool that is called GPT. Today, we'll be talking about artificial intelligence. With the rise of ChatGPT, there's increased focus on the AI sector. Unith is an ASEX listed technology company that's just raised capital to fund a ChatGPT driven conversational AI technology. The technology has got a diverse range of use cases. And of course, it's looking to ride the tailwinds of the artificial intelligence runway that's forecast to grow for years to come. We're very excited to be joined by the CEO of Unith, Idan Shmorak. Idan, exciting past few weeks. Welcome to the channel. Hey, great to be here. So many things happening. There's a lot of news for you, but before we get into that, did you want to give the viewers a bit of an overview about who Unith is and really what's that problem you're trying to solve? Well, as businesses go online, all businesses all around the world, they try to reach users as much as they can in a personal way, but it, you can't do it when you're online. And we take the, the, the loss of this human touch and we bring it back by creating digital humans on scale to every business in the world in a platform that we are now developing and we will release uh, towards the end of the calendar year. Every business could carry any type of information, whether they want to do sales, customer support, um, on board on products or training for their employees, it doesn't matter. They could just upload their knowledge base and they would have a very intelligent digital human carry this information on their behalf. Digital humans, to break that down for viewers who might not be familiar with that term, can you talk about what that would actually look like on a user face level and why it's so important in comparison to the current ways of working? So the current ways of working are impersonal. They are text-based. And we are providing an experience that looks like human, looks exactly uh, like me or you. And in fact, we could clone a person with just one image and around 30 minutes of their voice reading a sentence into a microphone of an iPhone or a good computer in a quiet room. And we can create a digital double of anyone that can carry this information. We're using, we have three layers for our technology, right? One is the video synthesis, uh, which is our and it's something that the company has invested a lot of time and funds in order to create. We have the platform on top of it, which creates, which connects everything. We have the voice cloning and we have the conversational part. The conversational part uh, had a lot of news in the last uh, 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 two months or so since the rise of OpenAI's uh, chat GPT. Um, but we're actually not riding on a wave. We've been looking on GPT, which is a technology that exists for years now. In fact, chat GPT, is GPT 3.5. There were three versions before that, right? Um, and so we've been experimenting, working on GPT 3 solutions for a while. And it just happened to be the time that we could connect all of these. And we were obviously flattered from, from great coverage all over the world regarding the potential of this ability. But what has been done until now with our platform and uh, with our clients is that we basically told the talking head what he can or she can or it can say, right? Um, and there would be an, a, a list of possibilities of what the answer uh, uh, could be or what the question could be. While now, any company could just upload their knowledge base, whether it's an Excel file, PDF, presentation, and the talking head would know how to carry a conversation depends, depending on the vertical, marketing, sales, onboarding, but it could answer any question based on the information provided in that closed environment. So not like ChatGPT, it's not that we're scraping the internet once in a while, we're using the company's knowledge bit that they've provided to us. It is fascinating to think about. And I think it's evident there with the discussion. It's obviously a B2B play. Can you talk about how you want to go to market moving forward? I know you've talked about that freemium model and what that really looks like as you start to commercialize. Yes, so we have started to commercialize since a very early stage of the platform, not only to show a reasoning to the market for the existence of this technology and show demand, uh, as we're looking on a 98 billion uh, Australian dollars market in 2030 by estimations that were made a year ago, I could imagine those estimations uh, would grow and the growth rate would just be uh, uh, steeper. Um, but um, the commercialization model that we're doing now is we sell it to enterprises. And we sell them a talking head that could do the work for them, could carry a specific information for them. But the vision and what we develop right now is a self-service platform that any business could go to the unit website and build their own digital human for free. And then once they upgrade it to a better looking or, some, or, 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 a, or a more fitting digital human to their business or themselves or a nicer sounding voice with a specific accent that you want to have, or specific know-how of information using the GPT feature or any other features, 
then they would pay on a premium package. It will also depend on the amount of interactions that the business is having every month. So it's different than you speak with 100 clients or with 100,000 or 100 million clients. Um, um, and, and that's how a freemium tiered subscription is working for B2B. I know you're still in the early stages and I think you've talked previously about the fact you want to identify those verticals, really allow the market to tell you where to go. But is there any that you think it's kind of best placed for or that you might really want to attack first up? Funny enough, this platform, the vision, um, was created to clone influencers with the understanding of if any users could uh, communicate with their favorite uh, adored influencer and consume through a digital human and basically, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the influencer could sign off for the digital human to do his work or her work. Um, so this was the vision. And I do believe uh, that in a few years or even closer, we would see these things start to kick in. But now where the technology is, which is you said, and it's right, it's still in early stages. We have a lot of work to create a scalable platform, to create a better looking human, to make it less uncanny. Uncanny is the definition is that you basically you look on a chatbot and it's making you feel weird because it's not a human. And it will be uncanny, but over time, our goal is to make it as similar, as human-like as possible. So you, you don't know, and we will tell you, but just looking, you don't know if you're speaking with a real or a, or a, or a fake human, right? Um, and and so, so this is the direction that we're, uh, that we're going to. And, and, and again, the, the, the work is, is, is cross-functional. So it's improving the, the, the human likeness, improving the conversation. Um, and, and piece by piece, um, we're recognizing more verticals. So I said we had uh, you know, sales and marketing through cloning influencers, but we see a lot of demand uh, when it comes to training, onboarding, instruction on how to use products, which is something that in the beginning was a bit... Uh, surprising to us, but now when we see where the true strengths of the platforms are, is where users on a text-based uh, text experience, which is, which could be boring uh, if you want to have, uh, you know, an onboarding experience or a finance department, you know, complex ideas that you need to carry, then we get users' attention and we make it interactive and we make it human. Fantastic. Just thinking about all the different use cases as well that I come through on the day to day, I could see how some of those would be making the experience a bit more interesting. Obviously, that brings us to the recent piece of news, four and a half million dollars raised from professional and institutional and sophisticated investors. Another 500,000 in the SPP at the moment currently underway. We've talked a little bit about it. Obviously, it allows you to plug into ChatGPT, but what does this really unlock for the company moving forward? So we have been building this on a very small uh, uh, funding. Right. Uh, when you look on technology companies uh, working with with uh, competent developers and competent engineers, um, uh, it's expensive. We are working in the most cost efficient way to work as a tech company. We have established a hub here in Barcelona, uh, which is one of the, the most cost efficient places in Western Europe to build a business um, and to attract talent. But still, in order to build a platform which is scalable, which is successful, you need capital. Um, we are going to use this capital to um, assemble the self-service platform, to support the freemium model, and to start sales on a larger scale one, once this is ready. And moreover than everything, to embed the GPT 3.5, uh, the, the chat GPT-based uh, solution, into the platform to give it a whole new brand. So what, what was now a, a, a pretty face is not just a pretty face anymore. It's going to be really smart. And we're going to do some hiring um, in order to support it. And we're going to bring some great engineers to help us uh, carry this vision. Fantastic. Obviously, there are all the different building blocks. In terms of timelines, I know things will evolve and change. But that self-service model, what's that timeline and pathway to get there moving forward? So we, we believe that by the end of the calendar year, by the end of 2023, uh, we're going to have a self-service model uh, soft launch, which means it will be available to a certain amount of users that will be determined by the loads that we, we carry. And we will find out that working in tech and developing software, you know that there is a lot that you do not know. Therefore, you need to be agile. You need to adapt, adjust yourself to where the demand is. As we took it from, from cloning influencers all the way to carry finance department's ideas, um, we realized that solution is not a, an ad hoc solution. It's a platform approach, and we don't want to tell our users what, what to do. We're taking an approach as Atlassian did, as Canva did, and we're building a platform which we serve to the users. 
Um, and um, and we will find out uh, uh, more challenges in the future. And I'm sure that we're going to see more opportunities in the, in the future. And this funding is our tool to ensure that it is in this great uncertainty, financial uncertainty in public and capital markets, private markets, we see startup closes, uh, startups close every day. Uh, it ensures that we can carry that vision confidently and uh, take this company to something uh, which is uh, way more than uh, um, profitable. You talk about vision there. Previously, maybe investors might have been familiar with the name Crab Media, but obviously you've rebranded to Unith. Can you talk about that transition and that change and what ultimately is that vision now that you've done that? Great. Well, Crab Media existed for a while. And the vision uh, that was carried by a uh, former chairman and, and CEO was to create this digital human platform. And Crowd Media back then invested in uh, uh, several ventures uh, to support this technology. As Crowd was not a technology company, I was a part of one of those, uh, one of these ventures. Finally, joining Crowd as a CEO. And when I joined, there was a lot to restructure to make this company a successful tech company, all the way uh, from from um, uh, from balance sheet to 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 team um, and cash flow regime. Um, and when we structured all of that, we saw uh, a few things. First, crowd media doesn't sound like technology. And in order to attract the right investors, the right employees, and the right um, uh, clients, we need to be a tech company. And it was very clear that we want to rebrand. It was very clear for a while, but a rebranding in the public company requires an annual general meeting. So we waited uh, for that. We've prepared ourselves um, to find the best name we are super proud and happy with Unith. It represents the unification with uh, between brands and technology. We have a crisp, clean messaging right now. We are about to launch a new website that represents a tech company. And it was very uh, uh, clear to us that this is the right thing to do with um, all respect to the history and heritage that Crowd Media left us a business communicating with hundreds of millions of users um, in an old uh, media tech industry. Now we are a almost completely new team, um, in, 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 which is ready to carry this new vision. Phenomenal. And obviously thinking about the fact that I know that you and particularly your team and everyone else within the industry has been working on artificial intelligence for many years, but to many with the rise of chat GPT, it almost seems like the AI era has just arrived in an instant. Can you talk about what it's actually felt like seeing the transition and really how it's helping maybe some of those commercial discussions and just the broader interest industry tailwinds that you're seeing emerge? Well, I, 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 I think it's, uh, it's rather funny being in the tech ecosystem uh, for a few years. You see everybody saying, ah, I'm doing AI. Everybody's doing AI, right? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a catchphrase now. But the companies that were actually doing AI developed some really proprietary, I, I can't describe it any other th than cool. And we have developed those algorithms that allows us to create those digital human. And we see the ecosystem full with it. Um, I believe that now we will see more and more companies integrating this great tool that is called GPT, which is in a way, I, I heard an engineer describing it, it's really sexy looking statistics, right? Because it basically, uh, it takes a, a, a database and by machine learning tools and artificial intelligence know to give you um, the right contextual answer on a human-like form sentence. It knows how to, to assemble the sentence by bringing the right answer. Um, um, and with the advancement of these algorithms that take the right answer and make it sound like it makes sense, uh, we're going to see a lot of solutions that we're going that are going to change our everyday life, the way that we consume information, the way that we consume media, um, the way that we would buy in the supermarket and the way that we see advertisement because prediction is going to be something that is going to control the market across the board. Um, and it's going to help, uh, I hope, only help uh, users to, to, to get everything that they need just faster. And we see that today with JGPT, people go and they do college uh, uh, essays. Uh, they let it write it and people uh, write weddings and funerals and, uh, and, and, and everything with that. Um, so this is just going to rise. And I, I believe that we are on um, an intersection in the way that we consume media, um, in the way that we consume technology. The intersection has arrived for those viewers that have been maybe just learning about the Unith story or for those who might have been following uh, for the past period. Did you have any final reflections that you wanted to leave them with? Well, we are the company on the verge of, of growth. We have now supplied ourselves with the right capital 
to bring this growth. And we have an extremely clear plan on what we're going to do with it and how we're going to commercialize it. We're going uh, to touch a market which is estimated in almost $100 billion in 2030. Uh, so even uh, uh, leaving 1% out of it would be uh, more than an amazing outcome. And we believe that the opportunities across several verticals that we can gain by developing a platform that millions of businesses across the world would be interested in using and paying even a small ticket puts us in a very competitive place. While we are one of the only companies in the world that can offer a one-to-one -one conversation with digital human, which is something that is not that easy to replicate, to recreate. So we are in some sorts of a blue ocean in a market which is growing towards building a massive business. Um, so I'm proud to lead this business and to work with things incredibly uh, um, competent engineers, teams we have in Barcelona and Amsterdam. And I, I invite everybody to follow uh, for more news that we're going to see uh, coming in the next uh, year. That's the unit story. It's ASX UNT. Really enjoyed that conversation. Looking forward to seeing where you head from here. A big thank you for joining us and look forward to catching up again soon. Thank you so much for your time.